It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we are delighted to be back. Uh, we've had a wonderful break of a mm -hmm. few weeks, and we want to thank Doug Hemp and uh, Douglas Woodward, Woodward mm -hmm. who filled in for us with an interview with Derek for the last few weeks. Those were uh, some fascinating takes on end times prophecy. We uh, plan to do more of those interviews in the uh, months ahead, as yeah, uh, we want to bring in other whole, viewpoints. a whole list of people that we want to get on and ask their opinions. So if there's someone in particular you would like for us to interview, please send us an email. Absolutely. You can find contact information at our website. You can go to unravelingrevelation.tv or gilberthouse.org, which to, is really our hub. Go to gilberthouse.org because everything we do can be found right there. And that even includes some of our blogs. Um, we have an app that we highly recommend you download because no matter what happens in the future, our content will always, always, always be there. And that includes not just this program, but uh, our weekly podcast, PID Radio, which stands for Peering Into Darkness. Yeah. That's what We've got started, us into all of this. got a note from Doug, uh, from uh, David Inslee today saying, PID Radio is back. Hi, David. So glad that you've discovered us again. And uh, my podcast, the interview program, A View from the Bunker, is there as well. And uh, classic episodes going back to 2005 when we started all of this. All of that available at the app along with a Bible. There's a Bible module, a, a, a an audio Bible, in fact. So you can listen to Scripture through that app if you choose. Uh, again, it's free, available for iOS, Android, Amazon, Kindle, Fire, phones and tablets. And you can also get the versions for Roku and Apple TV to put us up on the big screen. 2005, March of 2005. We have been at this for almost 18 years. And it took, uh, it took 17 years to realize that we actually had a ministry. Well, just about. Yeah. Tom Horn told us long before that that he we did. did, and he was right. Yeah, and we it, want to thank you for coming along. Amen to that. Well, we are 170 programs in to this <laughs> uh, study, and we're just now making it to Revelation chapter 16, which yeah. shows you how much depth there is in God's Word. So much, and that's because we've gone all the way back to Genesis. We've explored many other archaeological discoveries. We've looked at prophecy from the Old Testament. We've even looked at extra biblical sources, trying to get a, a handle on how the people who lived in the first century would have received, excuse me, would have received these words. Yeah. And there is a lot here. And of course, we've been rabbit trailing too, as we go through some of these we things. We have so many bunnies in this house. But the bottom line is... When we try to understand the scriptures, whether it's Revelation or any other aspect, the Gospel, the Old Testament, we have to do the best that we can to try to view those scriptures through the worldview of the apostles, the prophets, and the early church. What did they know about the world around them, about what their pagan neighbors believed? and how that is reflected in Scripture as well. Not that we need to know Greek mythology to understand the Bible, but what the Greeks, the Canaanites, the Babylonians believed was known to the prophets and the apostles, and much of what's in the Bible is in response to those pagan teachings. That's so true. I would even argue that if you go back 100 years, and maybe even less than that, it's difficult to understand the mindset of the people in the turn of the 20th century right. or in the mid-19th century they didn't have many of the things we do today. Their language was different. We have completely revised the English language in well, the last 150 years. Especially when you go back and look, uh, say, 400 years at uh, the most popular of the modern English language Bible translations, the King James translation, and how difficult some of those sections can be. Yeah, that they're gives really us tough. an example of how language and culture has changed over the last four centuries. Now multiply that by five 
and then we're back into the days of the apostles. Um, so we, we have to work mm-hmm. a little bit, but we've got all the tools at our disposal thanks to the internet. Yes, many bad things are shared through the internet, but there are many free tools that are available to us. So we really, really don't have an excuse not to dig deeper into the Word of God. We do not. And I'm using one of those free tools right now. I go to blueletterbible.org. It's a great resource. They have commentaries there, videos Mm -hmm. you can watch there, podcasts you can listen to there. And you can look at just about any translation you want and dig into. You can start with Strong's. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good starting place, but it won't give you the full depth of the the original meaning of the word in Greek, but it, because we're looking at the New Testament, it's Greek. But if you want more information, you can go to Faith Life Bible. You can mm-hmm. download other apps. Some will cost you, but a lot of them are free. A lot of the tools available are for free, and uh, we make it. We make good use of those. We've got some tools that we pay for, but um, and, and again, it's through your generous support that we're able to do that. That's so and, true. Um, we, we pray that um, through our study, we can share the excitement that we feel when we really dig into the Bible with you. And uh, so we're beginning with Revelation chapter 16, finally, as we get yeah. into the, uh, the bowls of God's wrath. Th- this is a period of time in, in the future where we have been promised that we, the believers in Jesus Christ, will not have to endure this. We are wow. not appointed unto wrath. Exactly. Regardless of where you stand on the rapture, Mm -hmm. let's say there is no rapture. The fact that I personally believe in one and I'm pre-trib, but I, you could also say I'm pre-wrath. I just happen to think that we are gone with the Lord before that final seven years begins, but definitely wrath. And I think that the wrath the genuine wrath against the fallen realm and those humans who have sided with them. Mm -hmm. That's the second half of that seven-year period. I think you're right about that. Um, There's a lot in in the Bible that is speculative because it's not explicit. And this is by design. God is not going to reveal all of his plans, being the greatest general in all of history. He's not going to reveal all of his plans to the enemy just yet, the fallen realm. They are students of Scripture as well. They know what the writings of the prophets and the apostles are. They know it better than you and I. But God has concealed some of this from them. When we look at Acts chapter 1 and we see that the apostles who had learned directly from Jesus for three and a half years still didn't understand his mission. Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? And uh, of course, that wasn't his mission in the first century AD. We probably don't understand the prophecies of his second coming any better than the apostles did the prophecies of his first coming, that is even while so, he was with them. So. That is so, so true. So read the first. All right. Let's, get, we'll get let's into, dig in. Revelation chapter 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple calling the seven angels, uh, telling the seven angels rather, go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. Now so, we don't know who's speaking here. No, that's true. We don't. Um, We're just coming from the temple. Most commentators would would suggest that because it's not specifically identified that this is the voice of God himself. And I'd be okay with that interpretation. Well, wrath of God, it's hard to tell, you know, because it may be speaking of someone else. Mm -hmm. But here's what I find interesting about this chapter. (laughs) The word feels, Mm -hmm. vials, bowls. Okay. This is a drink offering. Mm. This is a reversal of what the fallen realm insists we do for them. Okay, you know, I have to confess, that was just right over my head. But yes, you're right. The drink offering was an essential part of the the worship of the dead ancestors. Exactly. The worship of the dead and that had been even, ongoing for thousands of years. Yes, and it didn't even have to be a cup. It could be just a depression in the ground, mm-hmm. a, a scooped out area at the top of a mountain, which is what you find at the top of Mount Hermon. Right. These drink offerings, the yarit, mm-hmm. that was done up there. And it's done, it's like the ancestors, and I put that in air quotes because these are demons and fallen angels mm-hmm. who demand that the humans who want power from them or want favors from them or don't want to be cursed by them, that they give them ritualistic feedings Mm -hmm. of liquid and 
food, if you want to put it that way. And this is one thing that the Lord speaks about in Psalm 23. Oh. Where he reverses that instead of humans offering to the fallen realm. My cup runneth over. He fills our cup so so big. It it never has to be filled again. Mm -hmm. It's constantly running over. That is brilliant. And and you're right. And there are so many of these these funerary monuments in the ancient world, Mm -hmm. like dolmens, uh, where we find depressions, cup-shaped depressions in these monuments. Yes, called cup marks. Right, which... Uh, scholars are, are still trying to, you know, figure out yeah. what, they, probably for a drink offering of some sort. But we also see many of those funerary monuments for the um, the kings of the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Phoenicians. Yeah, ancestors that are supposedly deified now. Right, right. They've joined the assembly of the Rephaim or the mm. assembly of the Ditanu yeah, in, the, well, in the ancient world. It's the infernal realm. It's the infernal realm. But these, it was believed in the ancient world that you had to summon these these ancestors or these kings by name once a month, in the case of kings, twice a month, mm-hmm. and then give them a ritual meal, food, bread, grain, or and then a drink offering, either mm-hmm. wine or, mm-hmm. or water or, or beer or something. But uh, many of these statues, uh, because it was believed if you didn't do that and you didn't summon their name, if their names were forgotten, then they ceased to exist. But many of these statues uh, are of the kings have been found sitting there holding a cup. Yes, yes. Well, we've already seen in, in these 170 <laughs> wow. plus episodes that the book begins with the seven letters to the seven churches, and we get seven seals. That seventh one begins uh-huh. the seven trumpets, and we've talked about how the trumpets are warning signs, trying to get the attention of the human beings who haven't yet realized they need Jesus Christ as their Savior. That point is past. Yes. We are now into the, okay, now I'm going to give you what you deserve. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in doing it in a way that reverses these pagan rituals. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, Revelation 16, 1 again, that I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast mm-hmm. and worshipped his image. Now this is an interesting passage because these these sores, they've been interpreted as the result of plagues. They've been interpreted as the result of some sort of nuclear fallout, mm-hmm. um, some other biological weapon that's been released. That could all be true. But one of the things that you plead with the ancestors in these cup rituals, these uh, uh, sort of summoning the dead, is to be protected from disease. Mm -hmm. And if you are feeling unwell, then you ask them to make you better. In fact, the the Asclepion is one of the places Asclepius was a child, a son of Apollo. And so he had this healing ability. This is where we get the uh, caduceus. It's his staff mm-hmm. with a serpent. The rod of Asclepius. Up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because when you went into the Asclepion, you told them, here's what I, I've got these sores, I've got whatever, I want to go in there and I want to be healed. And you went in and they gave you an hallucinogenic, some sort of drug. You slept overnight with snakes crawling on you. Mm-hmm. And then you told them, this is the dream I had. Yeah, and they would interpret it, and and then prescribe a cure based on the interpretation on of your dream. Your dream, your, exactly. And by hallucinogen, uh, you're, we actually mean you know opening a portal, opening your mind to influences from the spirit. Exactly. Realm, right? so, Pharmacia. Exactly. So again, this is taking a look at the 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 idea that and you can also compare this to exodus mm-hmm. the idea that yes. these gods have the ability to heal you mm-hmm. or to hurt you well they won't be healed those who are suffering from this during the second half of the tribulation period i am very sorry to say these sores will be painful and they are not going to be healed by any modern medicine. No, no. This corresponds, by the way, you mentioned the book of Exodus. This corresponds to the sixth plague sent by God against Egypt, the plague of boils. 
Ah. Described in Exodus 9, verses 8 through 12. And this is, I, I imagine this may be similar to the kind of affliction that Job suffered because he talked about taking little uh, potsherds and scraping his skin, mm -hmm. which means he was trying to get these these boils right. or whatever they were to open up and weep to the get all of the infection out. Right, yeah. Um, then we move on to uh, verse 3, which is the second angel. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea and it became like the blood of a corpse, and every living thing died that was in the sea. Every living soul died that was in the sea. That's what the King James says, which I think is every really interesting. Soul died that because was in the it's sea. a yeah. reminder that the animal life also have a ruach. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, the New English translation renders that every living creature that was in the sea died, but. Uh, yeah. That's that that reference to Ecclesiastes that uh, the beasts have the same ruach as mm -hmm. man is uh, that's really intriguing. And but it's this, also intriguing given the whole climate change thing right now. Yeah, yeah. This is one of those passages, by the way, and we'll need to take a break in a moment. But this is one of those passages that that really argues against preterism, the idea that all of Revelation was already fulfilled in the first. Century I agree. Because, I know that there are some uh, preterists. Amongst our friends, some partial preterists right. amongst our friends, we love you. We may not agree on that, but it's not a salvific issue. It's not a salvific issue. issue. Right. Um, and by the way, this is very similar to the second trumpet judgment where the burning mountain is thrown into the sea and kills oh. a third of the life in the sea. But this one, this one Kill. finishes the job. Oh. Everything that's in the sea. And if the sea dies, well, life on, life mm -hmm. on planet Earth. And becomes pretty much impossible. Here's another interesting thing about things in the sea. The sea is identified with the ancient chaos monster, mm -hmm. the dragon. And this is a point where that monster is being raised to the surface. Yes, yes. The word for sea in Hebrew, yam, was uh, the same word used by the Canaanites for their equivalent of Leviathan, mm -hmm. chaos. And uh, interestingly, in that Canaanite pantheon, the sea and the rivers were connected. And the next judgment, which we'll touch on after the break, we'll get to that uh, in just a moment, deals with the judgment of the rivers. And uh, that's straight ahead on Unraveling Revelation. You have blessed us with your support during our first year in ministry. You literally make it possible for us to do what we do. And so as we prepare to head into a new year, we want to return the blessing to you. Through January, we've prepared a number of special offers at the Gilbert House store, and we're featuring The Red Wing Saga, Sharon's wonderful series of supernatural thrillers that teaches spiritual warfare through masterful storytelling with fascinating historical mysteries as the backdrop. Now, all eight novels in the Red Wing Saga, a $160 value, can be yours for just $110, a savings of $50. You'll also find the Derek Gilbert Collection, all five of my nonfiction books, a $100 value for just $70. Those are just two of the special offers available through January at our online store. You'll find it at gilberthouse.org store. And as always, we thank you for your prayers and your support. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. We're delighted to be back and uh, looking forward to everything 2023 brings us, including a trip to Israel in March. And if you are already signed up, we can't wait to see you again or mm. to meet you for the first time. But if you have not yet signed up, by the time you're watching this, it could be too late. Yeah, we're trying to fill enough on a third bus uh, to... Uh, get that, make that uh, work, uh, but without getting it overfilled. We don't want people, you know, right. squeezed in on these buses. We've, but, we've been um, squeezed in on those buses, and it's really difficult. So we're trying to give a little extra room, yeah, which is it, nice when you have big bags and you know things yeah, like that. But this actually is is going to be a pretty uh, oh. a pretty comfortable tour with three buses so with some neat. extra rooms you can stretch out if you need uh, room to put extra water because we will mm -hmm. need water as we're walking around oh yeah and uh, we're looking forward to seeing our good friend messianic rabbi zev Pratt, his lovely end. wife oh, lynn again we love her. and his teachings at uh, especially on the historic locations of uh, the crucifixion the resurrection and and bethlehem mm -hmm. and in october mm. we're going to be going to turkey yes we've been talking with the uh 
The, the, yeah, the, what am I trying to say? Agent. The travel agency. Thank you very much, Brian. I need to drink this coffee. The travel agency over there, and they are working out the exact details for that tour. And they've told us that many of the Ukrainians and the Russians who are fleeing what's going on in Ukraine right now have settled in Turkey because right. they feel it's a very safe place place yeah. to be. So we feel, feel very comfortable about going to Turkey. Yeah, they, they were very encouraging about that. In fact, they said 2021 was a record year for Western tourists in Turkey. Well, so. and 2022 continued it. In 2022, after, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm a year, see, He's, a new year. I haven't uh, clicked my calendar over it. so hard. 2022 was a you record year. You get to year. be old and you know, <laughs> <laughs> he just had a birthday. But uh, yeah, we are, we're going to that. And then we've got an announcement for the 2024 tour of Israel, mm -hmm. and we'll be making that very soon. Mm. So you can follow the latest information at gilberthouse.org slash travel. Yep. Well, um, Revelation 16, verse 3, now we get to the third bowl judgment. And uh, just as the second bowl judgment corresponded to one of the trumpet judgments, the third bowl corresponds to the uh, to a following trumpet judgment. The, the uh, second angel poured out, oh, I'm sorry, verse 4 now, the third angel... I'm raising my hand because yes. I want to say something about the previous verse before we get too far. Yep. The word translated as sea is thalassa, mm -hmm. which can generally mean all the seas, or it can mean just the Mediterranean and or Red Sea. Hmm, okay. So it could be it's a localized thing, but I'm betting it's a generalized thing. But just so if you have heard that it's just the Mediterranean or the Red Sea, then that is probably why that's taught. That would be really interesting, though. I know, specifically because that's where it is. And again, the Mediterranean Sea is bordering the, uh, the uh, Anatolia, mm -hmm. Asia Minor, which well, is where those seven churches are. And the, uh, the beast emerging from the sea in Revelation 13, given that there's a mountain in what is now Turkey on mm -hmm. the Mediterranean yes. coast that was sacred to Baal, Baal, mm -hmm. Satan in the ancient world. Uh, even the Greeks believed it was sacred. That's where G Zeus was supposed to have defeated the chaos monster Typhon. Yes. Mount Saphon is right there. I believe that that would be a good location. If we're looking for a physical location for the emergence of the beast from mm -hmm. the underworld in the supernatural sense, mm -hmm. I think that would be a good location right there in southern Turkey near the border with Syria. Which makes it even more interesting. Yes. So yes, yes, it could be one or the other. Okay, so uh, verse 3 deals with the second angel is pouring his bowl into the sea. Everything in the sea dies. Verse 4 now, the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And this, again, the connection in the ancient world, uh, it was believed that uh, Yom, was, it was called Prince Yom and Judge Nahar, yes. meaning Prince Sea and Judge Rivers. River. Essentially, even though it was like a compound name it was essentially believed to be the same entity the, mm -hmm. the seas and the, and the river the sea and the rivers were connected well even in the time i write the red wing saga in the 19th century and even in the 19th century there are records indicating that there was a belief that the rivers around england especially that area around london and there were quite a number of rivers and it isn't just the thames they all had their individual gods hmm mm-hmm that was an, not an uncommon thing in no. the ancient world. No, and the Romans, when they came through, they sure. believed it. The ancient tribes of, of that area, even in the United States, the American Indians, they believed that the rivers had their own gods. So this is, again, th the Lord is aiming these things directly at the fallen realm. Mm -hmm. Sadly, humans are in the way because many humans by this time have said, I am going with the fallen realm, and their opportunity for salvation has been closed. Mm. God, uh, there will still be believers on the earth. Yes, and and they will be protected through this. Yeah, and they will be hunted. Yes, they won't be able to buy or sell. It will not be a, a good time to be alive. No, so those anyone, individuals who are helped. Yeah, that it's it's going to be a time of great stress. Mm -hmm. Here's the interesting part. Now we get into verse five. Excuse me for bumping the microphone there. Um, I heard the angel in charge of the waters ah, say, and the yeah, Greek actually reads the angel of the waters. That's interesting. I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, just are you, O holy one, who is and who was, for you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, 
it is what they deserve. Oh my goodness. Well, now, yes. This is really interesting that we've got now, and I think we talked about this before, an angel of uh, the waters. Uh, in, in Revelation 14, we deal with uh, an angel with authority over the fire, uh, and we've got the angels of the four winds. Yes, yes. But I, I love this, that you have given them blood to drink. This is the Lord reversing that drink offering. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you blood to drink. Right, right. This is um, a pattern that we see again and again in Scripture. Even the, the, the Last Supper was a reversal of this ancient ritual of necromancy, of summoning what, what the pagans believed were their dead ancestors to yes. give food and drink to keep them alive for eternity in the netherworld. Jesus offering at the Last Supper his body and his blood symbolically through the water and the, uh, through the bread and the wine to keep us alive for all of eternity. In this word that is translated, you are not worthy, it refers to being weighed in the balance. Hmm. In, in which, uh, which verse are we talking about? The one now? that was giving you blood to drink because uh, you are not you worthy. What you deserve, okay. You give yeah. them, it is what they deserve, yes. Yeah. Well, this says, and I'm looking at the KJV intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. Oh, okay, for they are worthy. Yeah, that's... That, that's Again, that's where archaic English probably has a different meaning. This is what meaning. you deserve. This is what you deserve. You have been yeah. weighed, you have been judged. And again, this is really interesting because Judge Nahar. Yeah, <laughs> yes. The uh, Lord, once again, uh -huh. turning everything that the fallen realm do on its head. And uh, verse 7 here, and I think we'll conclude with the first three bowl judgments this week. And I heard the altar saying... Has yeah. that always been there? Yeah. Heard the altar saying? I know. Uh, again, is this the altar itself or those, the, the souls beneath the altar who've been crying out, how long, O Lord? Good question. And I heard the altar saying, yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The word translated altar, uh, the thu seastown, mm -hmm. Um, actually refers to an altar for the slaying and burning of victims. Hmm. So this may well be the souls underneath the altar who are crying out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, from back in Revelation 6. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it uh, is, is another one of those verses that mm -hmm. can slip past you when you're, you're reading through on your, your read the Bible in a year plan. Uh, until I've you're been reading there. through I've it. done that. Yeah, the altar says, wait a minute, the altar? Um, yeah. But reading it all in context and going back to Revelation 6, there are the those who have been um, martyred for their faith in God. And, and we argue and we believe that this goes all the way back to the, uh, the prophets of the Old Testament, um, calling out, how long, O Lord? Mm -hmm. But uh, we will pick up with the, uh, the final four, five, six, seven, the final four bowl judgments next week. Thank you for watching. This is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer-supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at unravelingrevelation.tv and gilberthouse.org. That's where you'll find our weekly Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship. Join us as we study the Bible every week, verse by verse, in chronological order. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri, 65633. 